Alright, today we're going to learn about percent of air. So turn to page 17 in your binder. Student handout 6. You may need to pause the video to wait for everybody to get there. Alright, so percent of air is used to find how much someone someone is off on something like the amount of money or an amount of anything someone is off so like if I had a jar of candy they do this at fairs and stuff and you have to guess how much candy's in the jar and everybody writes the number down and they figure out the winner well they figure out the winner by finding everybody's percent of error unless somebody automatically got everything right then their percent of error would be zero because they were dead on okay so if you were off you would have a percent of error percent of error is used a lot in science experiments too because when you're measuring different chemicals your humans can sometimes be off some so if they measure too much or too little they have a percent of error that could affect their experiment or whatever they're trying to make whether it's a medicine or at the plants whatever they're trying to make like chlorine or something they could be off and it could affect their outcome of their experiment or whatever they're trying to make so percent of error is very important you don't want to have a percent of error but we're humans and we make errors so we like to see by how much we're off so to get started on this absolute error the absolute error measures the difference between the approximate or accepted sometimes they use the word accepted value and the exact or sometimes they use measured these are just synonyms exact and measured mean the same thing accepted means approximate it can be used to fi in, by finding the absolute value of the difference difference means subtraction between the approximate value A, so they use an A, and the exact value V. And we've talked about absolute value. The absolute value of a negative 3 is 3. The absolute value of a 3 is 3. It's the distance away from 0. So this is the formula you can use. But basically, all we're doing on absolute error is finding the difference between numbers and difference means subtraction so we're just subtracting the numbers and I spelled that wrong I just didn't do basically to find absolute error we're finding the difference just like in the formula change over original we had the change we had to find the difference so it's exact same formula we're just learning new words so these two problems we're just finding the absolute error we're not finding the percent yet we just want to know the difference Number one says a science experiment calls for 150 milliliters of water, but Simon measures out 147 milliliters. What is the absolute error? We could use their fancy absolute value, do the approximate. Well, the approximate is how much he used, so 147 minus the exact the exact amount he needed was 150 if I was to subtract that I would get a negative 3 but since I'm looking for the absolute value absolute value is always positive so the it would be 
3 milliliters. Because the absolute value of 3 is 3 milliliters. And I wrote that backwards, but same difference. You could do it the fancy way with the absolute value, but all you're really doing is subtracting your larger number by your smaller number and seeing how much he's off. So it's going to be subtracting two numbers to find how much he's off. So number two. A student measured the mass of an object to be 56 grams, but the actual mass was 53 grams. What is his absolute error? Basically, when they ask for absolute error, they're asking for the difference. So, sub all you really need to do is subtract your larger number minus your smaller number to find the difference, and it looks like he is his absolute error is 3 grams of how much he's off. So you could do fancy way absolute value or basically what we're doing here of just subtracting to find absolute error. So now that we know how to find absolute error we want to find percent of error. And we're basically doing the same thing we've done before. So percent of error compares the absolute error to the exact value. An example when calculating the mass of an object in science, measuring the or measuring the distance an object has traveled, etc. We're finding the percent of error or guessing how many marbles is in a jar. That is percent of error. It can be solved using a percent error equation in which the values are plugged into the formula below. I don't really like this one. I like the this one that looks like the one we've been doing. Percent over a hundred We've been used to that. And then our subtraction over our exact value. So you will probably see me write the shortcut way, like on the marker board. Percent over 100 equals, this is your absolute error, whatever you're subtracting, over your exact. You'll probably see me write it like this several times. So I like to use this formula. This one's confusing. So number three says, during a school assembly, Miss Quinn takes attendance and counts 356 students. In actuality, there were 376 students. What is the percent of error? So I'm plugging into my formula. I don't ha I wasn't given a percent, so that's going to be my variable over 100 equals I have to find a difference here, so I'm going to come off to the side and subtract 376, my big number minus my small one. And when I subtract that, I get 20. So my absolute error that Miss Quinn was off was 20 students. And then we need our exact. What was the exact amount of students that was in the class? It was really 376. She was off by 20. Now I have my formula to set up. I cross multiply. 20 times 100 gives me 2,000. 
Then I divide by 376. Get my nice calculator here. And we have 2,000 divided by 376. And um, we're going to probably round percents to one decimal place. So my percent of error that Miss Quinn was off was 5.3%. That's the percent of error Miss Quinn was off. All right, number four. In a crowded sports arena, 250 seats are counted. If there is a 20% error on the counted, on the count, what is the range of acceptable number of seats? So this time, they gave me a percent. So I would fill in for my formula. They gave me a percent. It was 20 over percents are always over a hundred equals I um I, lo I lost my spot I am looking for the acceptable number of seats they gave me the exact seats so 250 is your exact I need to figure out how much they were off by, what 20% is off by. So I had to cross multiply 20 times 250 equals 5,000. Then I would divide by 100. Oh man, typed the wrong thing. Oh, nice. And I get x equals 50. They were off by 50. But they wanted to know what is the range of acceptable number of seats. So the exact amount that they counted was 250. So they might have counted 50 fewer than 250, or they might have counted 50 more than 250. So the range could be 250 minus 50, which would be 200, to, or I could add them, 250 plus 50, to 300 seats. That's how much they could have been off. They didn't tell me they added too many or they added too little. They don't know what they did. So, they could have been off, or we know they were off 50 seats. So that means there could be 200 seats, or there could be up to 300 seats. We're not too sure, but that's the range of number of seats in the sports arena. All right, flipping to the back. It says, several students are competing in a science club competition to build a car that will travel exactly 10 meters. The distance each student's car traveled is shown in the table below. A wants us to find the absolute error of the race car. And absolute error just means difference. So we're finding the difference. We're subtracting. The actual distance was 10 meters. Emily's only went 9.2. So I would subtract 10 minus 9.2 and Emily's absolute error would be 0.8. Same thing with Jerome. Jerome's went 10.6. 
the actual distance was 10. So I'd subtract my larger number, 10.6 minus 10, and his absolute error would be 0.6. And then Maricela's went 9.8. The actual distance was 10, so 10 minus 9.8 gives me 0.2. That's the actual error. So actual error is just subtracting. To find the percent of error of the race, I needed to know the actual, uh, the absolute error, the difference, to be able to compute this. So Emily's. I'd use my formula, percent over 100 equals absolute error over the exact. So Emily's, we don't know a percent, we're looking for that. So it would be x over 100 equals, her absolute error was 0.8. And the exact was 10. So I would cross multiply. I would do 100 times 0.8 equals 80. Then I need to divide by 10. And it looks like the percent of error for Emily's is 8%. Okay, pause the video and try finding the other two percent of error. Then start the video back to check your answers. Okay, for Jerome, the percent of error you should have gotten should be six percent and the percent of air for Maricela should be two percent C says based on this information what does a small percent air indicate so they want to know what does it mean to have a very small percent of error? The answer I have, a small percent of error would indicate that a, the car is built closer to the needed specifications and can travel very close to 10 meters. Okay, so they were building cars. If they built it pretty close to the, what the guidelines said, that means they're going to get very close to 10 meters. If they didn't follow the guidelines very well at all, they're not going to get very close to 10 meters. All right, D says, mark each of the following statements as true or false based on the data. First one says, Jerome has the smallest percent of error. Okay, so looking at my percents of error, does Jerome have the smallest? No, it looks like Maricela has the smallest at 2%, so this would have to be false. Emily's race car was the most accurate. Okay, well, looking... The most accurate would be closest to 0%. 0% means no error at all. Well, 8% is not the most accurate if Maricela's was at 2%. So that would be false. Emily and Maricela had a negative percent error because their cars traveled less than the desired z distance. So they were saying since these were below 10 meters that they got a negative percent. We didn't find negative percents 
because we always take the absolute value. So that doesn't make sense to ever have a negative percent of error. So that is false. All right, number six. Mr. Brown's class was guessing the number of gumballs in the gumball machine in the cafeteria. All of the guesses were between 382 and 456. After counting, it was determined that there were actually 408 gumballs in the machine. A says, what is the absolute error of the guess below? And then B says, what is the percent of error of the guesses below? So I'd like you to pause the video and try A and B and then start the video back up to review your answers. Okay, let's review our answers. It says, what is the absolute error of the guesses below? Well, I would have to find absolute error, we subtract, so I'd do 408 minus 382, and I would get an absolute error of 26. Then the guess of 456, I would subtract 456 minus 408 and get an absolute error of 48. To find percent of error, I would have to plug into my formula, percent over 100 equals um, absolute error over exact. So plug it into that to find percent of error, and you should get the percent of error to be 6.4%. If you did not get this, you probably did not do a subtraction here. You had to use this 26 here, and your exact would have been 408. Okay, for the percent of error for 456, to see how much percent he was off on his guess, I would do the 48 over 408 to find my percent, cross multiply and get a percent of 11.8 percent. So to summarize up the lesson, absolute error, I want you writing this on the bottom of your paper, absolute error is subtraction. Then percent of error is your formula. Percent over a hundred equals absolute error over exact. That's two different things, so pay attention to what the question's asking for. So I'd like you to try homework six. You have the rest of the hour to work on that. If you become disruptive, you have page 19 to do for homework as well and classwork. Otherwise, you just have homework six.